life doesn't get much better than this, and it's likely you'll have fond memories of this for the rest of your lives. My name is Justice Eileen Moore, along with my colleagues, Justice Richard Feibel and Justice David Thompson. I sit on the California Court of Appeal. This ceremony is an official function of the California Court of Appeal, albeit with uh, fewer formal requirements. Feel free to take uh, photographs and to walk around to get a good shot, but don't walk around too much. <laughs> Our function here today is to administer the oath of admittance to the California Bar for you. From the Federal District Court is just Judge Josephine Staten. Judge Staten will administer the oath for admittance to the practice in the United States District Court for the Central District of California. Addressing you will be three bar leaders. Richard W. Millar, Jr. is a delegate of the American Bar Association. Michael Baroni is the president of the California of the Orange County Bar Association. And Pearl G. Mann is on the California State Bar Board of Trustees. From the Committee of Bar Examiners is Erica Hiramatsu, who will provide the official report of certification of your fulfilling the requirements of the bar examiners. Justice Thompson will call the roll. That is, he will announce the names of those who successfully passed California's rigorous bar examination. He will also state the name of each person's law school. When he calls your name, please remain standing. And uh, after you, all your names have been called, I will administer the oath to you. Even after I administer the oath to you, remain standing and judge statement will administer the federal oath to you. After the oaths, you may be seated, and Justice Bible will deliver some closing remarks. First, we'll hear from Richard Millar from the, Cal from the American Bar Association. Thank you, Justice Moore. Well, congratulations. We have, I, I always, Divide congratulations into three subgroups. One, of course, all of you who passed the bar. Two, all of you who supported them emotionally and financially. And three, all of you who put up with them. <laughs> Those of you who wanted to run screaming from the dinner table, I don't care what they said in the rule of Shelley's case. Uh, in 1878, 70, 75 lawyers got together and formed what is now the American Bar Association. At 400,000 members, it's the largest volunteer organization of its kind in the world. It passes the model rules, which become the model rules of almost all of the states. Its resolutions become acts of Congress. It accredits law schools, as you probably find out, found out. It offers continuing education in every single uh, matter that you could possibly imagine. The section of litigation is 60,000 members, and they have wonderful programs for you. One of the particular advantages is perspective. Here you can go and find out what lawyers in Virginia, Maine, Texas, so forth, how they practice and how that will influence your practice. So I would like you to I would like you to join the American Bar Association and leave you with one other thought. Just remember, you never learn anything when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'll hear from Michael Baroni, president of the Orange County Bar Association. Out there by Ms. Malara, who writes a very funny column in the Orange County Lawyer Magazine on the Lawyer's Jurisdiction, so definitely look at that. I want to say profound congratulations to everyone here. Um, you've passed the country's toughest bar exam, and I can say everything gets easier from here on in, in my opinion. I've passed to um, New York and California, and to me, your most miserable experience as a lawyer is definitely over. I would never want to repeat the bar exam myself. Um, <laughs> You're entering the most critical profession 
in the United States. The lawyers are in a sacred position of trust. They're the watchdogs and the gatekeepers, and you safeguard people's rights and liberties. You need to be champions of our Constitution, um, if not you, and who, right? Um, you're the ones who will help people through their most difficult problems. Now, I've always been an in-house counsel um, in my 24 years, uh, starting New York at a media company, then a book publisher, then Lehman Brothers, then an internet infrastructure company, a giant German manufacturer, and now at a large amusement park company. And I'll tell you the, that the best moments for me as a lawyer and the things that made me a better lawyer were the worst, most horrible situations I always faced, because that's what told you as a real legal warrior. So I tell you, embrace those challenges and proactively seek them out. That's the way you keep improving. There's a quote from Henry Ford that I always loved. It says, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. And it's very true. I was a javelin thrower in college, and I learned about the physics of the fact that when you throw the javelin, you want to win right in your face. <laughs> it seems counterintuitive to me at the time, but that's how you get your greatest lift and distance. Right? So law, to me, should be very fun, intellectually fascinating always, and personally very rewarding. But that really requires that you engage in it with real passion, always with a focus of doing honorable work to help other people, your clients that you're serving, and making sure that you're not ground up by your job, which happens to a lot of lawyers. It's the most stressful profession in the United States. Uh, it's consistently, you know, number one is lawyer. Um, many lawyers are definitely miserable, but I find that's because they're often too boxed in and too zeroed in on, on just, you know, their own job and what they're doing. So, my answer to all of you is Orange County Bar Association. I would not be nearly the lawyer I am without it. Um, almost all the contacts I've made have come through the Orange County Bar Association, but it's also what's helped me to stay very cutting edge. The Orange County Bar was founded in 1901. We've got uh, nearly 9,000 members now, 27 sections in every different area of law, entertainment, real estate, uh, wills, trust estates, et cetera. 16 committees, so you can do things like draft new legislation, uh, you can be on the editorial committee of the magazine. Um, we've got numerous charitable events, and we've got about 20 community outreach events. We just did, had adoption, we did beach cleanup, a lot of pro bono work opportunities. Social events and mixers are a lot of fun. Would you think that the Orange County Bar would go to places like Tahiti in Sicily and Iceland? <laughs> That's another good reason to, to be a part of that group. And you get to go with judges on these trips. That's a special thing. Uh, you can even find mentors and you match with a mentor, which is a huge help, particularly if you don't have that kind of situation to work most. Young Lawyers Division, we have Colin here, who heads that up, 700 members. Extremely fun group, everything from Tiki Cruises to Bad News Barristers baseball team. Um, and in my opinion, the Orange County Bar helps keep you healthy and happy and home to your board because you need to get out of your normal grind every once in a while and be around new people and uh, new situations and learn from your colleagues. Uh, great networking, obviously. Constantly helps you to stay funny and just close to things stay on in your job. And I think that as lawyers, Always strive to breathe new life into your practice, or you really start to love it. My final message is uh, live with unimpeachable ethics and integrity. Um, the slightest thing that you wear can really uh, hurt you for you um, if, if you ever act out in a bad way. And that, that stays with you. I've heard people talk about, oh, this is what this guy did to me 20 years ago. Right? And that goes around our town. Um, keep your kindness and your humility in mind. And we talk about civility and bias a lot, but really take it to heart as to what that means in terms of treating other people well. Thank you, and God bless, and congratulations. Thank you. I don't know if you realize it, but joining the American Bar Association or the Orange County Bar Association is optional. It's up to you. Not so for the State Bar of California. <laughs> And it's very interesting when you uh, join the local bar association, that is, if you have something within you where you want to help others and be involved with your community, the Orange County Bar Association has been very active. 
so far as homeless issues, veterans issues, and many other issues, and you really can um, perform a significant service to humanity. And joining the American Bar Association for me has been a very different experience that is learning so much from how other states and other communities um, do what you're trying to accomplish at the same time. And now we have Pearl Mann from the California State Bar Board of Trustees. Good morning. I'm actually a past member of the Board of Trustees, but I have this honor today because I'm the last person elected from Orange County to serve. So as you move up in your career, some of you may want to run for that position. So it's my honor and pleasure to congratulate all of the people who will be sworn in as new lawyers this morning, and to the family and friends who supported you to get you here. Welcome to practice in our noble profession. It will change your life because you'll have the power to do so much good for so many people. And it wasn't easy for you to get here, I know. I remember what uh, Justice Moore said. Only 34.5% of the exam takers pass. So what an accomplishment. You should give yourself a hand. <laughs> Unlike the ABA, the OCBA, and various specialty bars, many of which I am a member of, uh, the State Bar of California is not a bar association or a trade association. It's actually a public corporation under the administrative arm of the California Supreme Court. When we pay our dues, we're paying for our license because the state bar's primary function is to admit and regulate lawyers. Despite what you read in the media, 70% of our membership dues are used to, uh, to discipline slightly more than 1% of the over 250,000 lawyers in California. Unfortunately, some of the 1% hurt or take advantage of many numerous clients. The State Bar also supports its lawyers. And to help our members avoid being part of that 1% who are disciplined, the State Bar offers some of the following. An ethics hotline, rules of professional responsibility, continuing education classes, a directory of practicing attorneys, and for information about these and other offerings, you should check the State Bar website at calbar.org. You probably checked it to find out whether you passed, so you know it. In our day, we had to wait for the mail, and mine arrived two days before my birthday and Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it was exciting to have passed. The State Bar also has a, an active CYLA, California Young Lawyers Association, and you may want to learn more about that and become involved with them. I want to give you a few useful tips as you begin your exciting new adventure in law. First, your reputation is everything, and your word is your bond. Keep it. And be aware that not every client or lawyer will keep theirs. Be civil and courteous to everyone, especially court clerks. They can be your best friends. Find a mentor, a judge, an experienced attorney, uh, the OCBA mentoring program, uh, preferably not someone in your own firm, because you may have questions or issues that arrive where you don't want to talk to somebody in your office. And then it's critical to have a mentor if you're solo. I had a fabulous mentor. Um, Judge Warren G. Ferguson, who's now deceased, he was with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal, and I was his extern. And he would say to us, he would give us tips as he gave us our assignments, or as we reported back what we had learned. Um, never be afraid to go to trial. Never waive a jury, and never give up. And in my first job for a small firm, where I was the law and motion department, every day I would say, never give up, never give up, and I got nervous and uh, overwhelmed. And then finally, be true to your own moral values. You're going to be able to look yourself in the mirror and your face, at your face in the mirror in the morning and feel good. 
And there are ways to do that, and so a mentor might help you. And then a practical tip for those of you who may not have a job um, and plan to open your own solo practice, check out the Legal Aid Society of Orange County's LEAP program. LEAP stands for Lawyer Entrepreneur Assistance Program. And it provides training and advice and handling the case in several legal fields, and it's free if you take a pro bono case. I'm on the board of directors of Legal Aid, so if you want to call me, you can go to calbar.org and find my phone number and ask me about it, and I can refer you to the proper people. So in closing, I wish you all great success in the practice of law. Welcome to the practice. From the Committee of Bar Examiners, Erica Hiramatsu. I had the least inspiring thing to say today, except it is the motion that moves all of you into the state bar. So, may it please the court, please turn off your phone. I am here today on behalf of the Committee of Bar Examiners for the State Bar of California to present these candidates for admission to practice law in California. They have spent years preparing for this day. Title IV, Division I of the Rules of the State Bar of California, otherwise known as the Admissions Rules, and Section 6060 of the California Business and Professions Code requires that these admissions candidates meet certain pre-legal requirements they complete an education in law, they be found to be of good moral character, they pass a professional responsibility examination, and that they pass the California Bar Examination. They have met all of these requirements for which they should be congratulated. The admissions rules require these candidates after having met all these requirements to be certified to the Supreme Court of California by the Committee of Bar Examiners as eligible for admission. They have. And upon motion of the committee, the Supreme Court of California has ordered their admission to practice law in California upon taking their prescribed oath. They are before you for that purpose, and it is an honor for me to present them to you for taking the attorney's oath of office. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Justice Thompson will now read the roll. Remember to read. Stand up when he calls your name and remain standing for both the state oath and the federal oath. Good morning. Congratulations to all the successful applicants. I'm going to call the names of the individuals and I'll do my best to pronounce your name correctly. And I apologize in advance if I get it wrong. Nader Adley. From Oak Brook College of Law, Sania Ahmed, George Washington University, Damun Aliazdi, Trinity Law School, Diego Aviles, Santa Clara Law School, William Bennett, Quinnipiac University, Katarina Boras, University of San Francisco. Anthony Bui, Notre Dame. Grace Cara, California Western School of Law. Anna Castro, Thurgood Marshall. Paige Clark, John Marshall. Kevin Camino, Gonzaga Law School. Frank Chatsipancios Whittier Law School. Andrew Deepan, UC Davis. Grant Downing, UC Hastings. Cherian Elrawi, Trinity Law School. <clears throat> Ellie Kasemi, Trinity Law School. Tillman Heyer. UC Irvine, David Ignash, University of San Diego, Emily Ikuda, University of Southern California, Camelia Imani, UC Davis, 
Grant Johner, Golden Gate University. Rana Consagra, University of San Diego. Albert Kim, Pepperdine University. Sarah Kiriakides, University of Cincinnati. Megan Leon, McGill University. Italia Lima, John Marshall Law School. Brittany Marksbury, USC. Michael Mashburn, Loyola Law School. Nicholas McNally, Western State. Andrew Mikarasset, USC. Hassan Okulis, American University. Lou Patrick Navales, Western State. Christina Navarro, University of San Francisco. Jenny Wing, <laughs> Cal Western. Wong Wing, Chapman University. Janice Desor, George Washington. Michael O'Bearn, Michigan. Kimberly Orr, Brigham Young. Jody Pace, Trinity Law School. Lauren Patterson, Georgetown. LaCoya Pittman, University of Baltimore. Carrie Rader, Trinity Law School. Daniel Richards, University of Washington. Excuse me. <coughs> Olivia Saladino, University of San Diego. Kelsey Schuchert, UC Irvine. Aliza Siddiqui, Western Michigan University. Tyler Smith, Suffolk University. Jose Valdez Diaz. Western State, and Julianne Wallen, Pepperdine. Is there anybody I missed? <laughs> In the back. Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson? Yes. Western State. Welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Raise your right hand, please, and repeat after me. I state your name. I solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. <clears throat> that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. As an officer of the court. As an officer of the court. I will strive to conduct myself. I will strive to conduct myself. At all times. At all times. With dignity, with dignity, courtesy, courtesy, and integrity. And integrity. Congratulations. Justice Moore kindly 
uh, gave me permission um, to address you as well before giving you the oath. So my, my, the first order of business is uh, to trust that if you're standing now, you will remember to stand again when I administer the oath. So I am going to have you sit down. Those of you who are taking pictures, you might as well sit down because it doesn't look any different if you take a picture of someone taking a federal oath or a state oath. <laughs> So the first thing I'm going to note while you're getting seated is that I think it's a very good thing uh, that the president of our uh, Orange County Bar Association became a lawyer and not a salesperson. Because he tried to sell you on the Orange County Bar Association by telling you that you get to take trips with judges. <laughs> I, I think that may have been counterproductive, Mr. Jones. So first of all, good morning and congratulations. I want to welcome you on behalf of the federal court. Uh, we are here as guests of the State Court of Appeal, and so I, I very much appreciate being able to um, uh, administer the federal oath today. We know how hard you have worked to get here. Uh, you kept your nose to the grindstone in college and you got into law school at some point, maybe even after working in another career. You. Uh, uh, kept your nose to the grindstone in law school and you graduated. You kept your nose to the grindstone and you passed the bar exam. Um, but every once in a while, and today is one of those days, you get to lift your nose from the grindstone and think about this as, as Pearl Mann noted earlier, as a noble profession, right? Not just a job. And. Um, you may be familiar with the line from Shakespeare, I think it's from Henry VI, part two, uh, where one of the characters says, first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. <laughs> ah, and you just laughed. Okay, we're gonna get back to that in a moment. Okay. Um, that one line has created such turmoil and debate. Why, what does it mean? Um, well, one reading of the line lends itself to the interpretation that in a utopian society there wouldn't be any lawyers, right? It's the negative view of lawyers. Lawyers are ambulance chasers. Lawyers are those who uh, hold justice hostage to high fees, right? But, but there's another interpretation that I think is um, more consistent with reality and it's also accepted by many scholars and that is that the character speaking the line is the henchman of someone who is leading a rebellion. And um, they know that the lawyers are the ones who would maintain the rule of law. So if you want to avoid the rule of law, the first thing you do is you get rid of all the lawyers. Now, but the question is, the real question, is why do so many people laugh or applaud when they hear that line from Shakespeare? So I think that you should make it your endeavor as a lawyer um, to make sure that the next generations would not understand why anyone would laugh at that line. So some of you know where your career is headed. Um, maybe um, maybe others, of you, others of you have no idea of what your future holds, but some of you may be, um, turn out to be prosecutors uh, working to do justice for society and victims of crime. Others of you may be criminal defense attorneys, ensuring the preservation of constitutional rights and thereby ensuring the continued liberties of everyone. <laughs> Maybe some of you will be civil attorneys representing corporations who are trying to grow their business. Whatever your path, I recommend that you always keep the thought that this is a noble profession. Somewhere, keep that thought in the back of your mind, because if you do that, you are more likely to treat opposing counsel with civility and with courtesy. You're more likely to make the ethical choice when faced with a dilemma. You're more likely to prepare thoroughly before your appearance in court. And I have to tell you, I very much appreciate it. <laughs> in short, it's more likely that you will maintain this as the noble profession that it is. Uh, so now I come to the point where I face a dilemma. Um, you see, you just heard that wonderful, beautiful state oath, but I have to administer the federal oath, and it's somewhat awkwardly phrased, so I have to make a decision. My instinct is to take a red pen and cross out some of the words.
words and put in my own that I would like better. But in the interest of making sure that you really do become members of the federal bar, I'm going to refrain from doing that. Um, so when you hear the term demean in the, um, in the oath, just in your own mind, substitute the word comport. Comport myself, all right? So with that, please remember if you were standing before, and stand again, and raise your right hand to the oath. I state your name. I do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the government of the United States. To the government of the United States. That I will maintain the respect. That I will maintain the respect due to the courts of justice. Due to the courts of justice and judicial officers. And judicial officers. And that I will demean myself as an attorney. And I will demean myself as an attorney. Proctor. Proctor. Advocate. Advocate. Solicitor. Solicitor. And counsel of the federal court. And counsel of the federal court. Uprightly, according to law. Uh, rightly according to law. So help me God. So help me God. And congratulations, you are all admitted to this. <laughs> Justice Richard Bible will now deliver his closing remarks. Thank you, Justice Moore. Good morning and welcome. <clears throat> that sounds kind of ominous. He's going to deliver his closing remarks. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here to welcome all of you to all these organizations and the bar. Um, congratulations again to each of you for passing the California Bar. I know how difficult that was, and now for taking your state and federal oaths. Also, I'd like all of you to please congratulate your families and loved ones who are here for their support and their encouragement. Thank them. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a preview of what I'm going to talk about today. Part one, um, and you notice some continuing themes here. Um, I'm going to talk about civility and ethics and the practice of law. And part two is sort of a bigger picture of your place in society as a lawyer with uh, special skills and opportunities. So I've been, um, I practiced law for 30 years. I've been a judge for 17. So that's my perspective. And I, like Justice Moore, I actually do remember taking my oath as a lawyer. If you do the math, that was really a long time ago. Um, but this really is the first day of the rest of your lives. An important milestone for you in the development of your reputation, for your legal skills, and for ethics. In 1850, Abraham Lincoln addressed a group of law graduates. It was a very short speech, shorter than mine. What he said was, resolve to be honest at all events. Resolve to be honest at all events. So here he was in 1850, talking to recent law graduates, and that was his advice. It's an important lesson for you as, in your career as a lawyer. Take it to heart. Your life and career will be more successful and personally rewarding if you practice law with integrity and the highest ethical standards. Your colleagues, your clients, adversaries, and courts will respect you, and you will enjoy well-deserved and well-earned credibility. The public, too, will benefit because the reputation of the legal profession itself will be enhanced. Recently, the Orange County Bar Association adopted its own civility guidelines to be followed by its members. Judge Stitton and I were fortunate to be among the group of lawyers and judges who drafted them and then they were adopted by the Bar Association. They're easy to read, only two pages, we got it all in two pages. Um, 
So I just want to read you the uh, first paragraph because it, it is really, uh, again, a continuing theme of what you've heard this morning, but it is endorsed by the Bar Association, which hopefully you will become a member of. The practice of law is a noble, time-honored profession requiring and inspiring trust and confidence. Lawyers rightly take pride in seeking mutual cooperation and maintaining personal dignity. Lawyers practicing in the Orange County, this now includes you, share a commitment to civility and recognize their obligation to be professional with clients. Other parties and counsel, the courts and the public. So even as a new lawyer, you're saying to yourself, I'm just a new lawyer, what, what can I do? You can be a leader and build a reputation in the community for honesty and professionalism, your own reputation. <laughs> powers of intellect and reason will be crucial to your success, but they are not enough. Your patience and courtesy are important too, and as others have suggested, will be tested. Over time, if you maintain ethical conduct and civility, you will earn a reputation in the community as a person and a lawyer who can and will be trusted. I practice law and I aspire to these same goals. I believe you can achieve these goals and at the same time, Represent clients vigorously and yes, tenaciously. It can be an effective advocate to put things aside and maybe even delete them, but from time to time, you get something that's really meaningful. So I got this book of all places from the School of Law in, in University of Arkansas in Little Rock, and there's an article in it that really struck home. Now, some of you in the audience may recognize the names Fred Astaire and Brishnikov. Does anybody, it's, pop, it's not even pop culture, but hopefully you know who it's going to happen. So Brishnikov, who was quite an accomplished dancer himself, was in a, participating in a tribute to Fred Astaire. And what he said was, you know, the rest of us dance. Fred Astaire, he does something else. Well, in the legal profession, the rest of us write. People like Louis Brandeis, Justice Brandeis, and Justice Jackson, they did something. So Justice Brandeis wrote a concurring opinion in 1929 in a case called Whitney versus California where he explained the underlying rationale and premise for all these liberties and all these responsibilities that we have. And what he said about the founders was they valued liberty both as an end as a mean, and as a means. They believed liberty to be the secret of happiness and courage to be the secret of liberty. They believe that freedom to think as you will and to speak as you think are means indispensable to the discovery and spread of political truth, and that without free speech and assembly, discussion would be futile. He went on to say that the great menace to freedom is an inert people, that public discussion is a political duty. And he concluded by saying, believing in the power of reason as applied through public discussion, they eschewed silence coerced by law, the argument of force in its worst form, recognizing the occasional tyrannies of governing majorities. They amended the Constitution so that free speech and assembly should be guaranteed. That's what he wrote in 1929. It took 40 years until 1969 in a case called Brandenburg versus Ohio, for that to become the sentiment in the law of the land. In that case, the court held that a statute which purports to punish mere advocacy and to forbid assembly with others merely to advocate the desired type of action is unconstitutional. So what does all this mean to you? We've heard people stand up today, talk about the state bar, the Orange County Bar Association, American Bar Association, all the opportunities that, that both Justice Staten and Justice Moore talked about. These are opportunities for you to become a member of society. You have special skills, you have interests, you have the opportunity, whether it's working for a nonprofit, working pro bono, volunteering for these associations. These are opportunities available to you, and it's important to society that you take hold of these responsibilities and succeed. So I want to conclude uh, by saying two things. One is, it's a very special day for all of us judges 
because normally when we finish our job, we make half the people happy and half the people really unhappy. <laughs> uh, and today we, we made everybody happy. So that, that's a very cool thing. Um, so I want to conclude by congratulating each and every one of you and your families and your loved ones and congratulate each one of you on your successful passing of the bar and admission to the bars. Thank you very much. Listen carefully. Court is now adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>